Welcome everybody to Scott County High School. It is a Red Blazer night. It's Steve Hilton of the Scott County Girls wearing the Billy Hicks Honorary Red Blazer. It's championship night of the 42nd District and it's a double header here for the Cardinals. In game one, the girls will be going up against Bryan Station. The defenders, kind of a surprise finalist. This is the first time in at least four years that we haven't had a Henry Clay Scott County final. And then also a surprise on the boys' side as a lot of us were maybe anticipating a Henry Clay Scott County matchup there. Instead, you're going to get the Cardinals who had to fight through overtime to get to that point by beating Bryan Station on Wednesday night, going up against Frederick Douglass, which knocked off Henry Clay in double overtime. So it's two versus four in the boys and one versus three in the girls. It's going to be a good night. A little bit of a different night here as uh, my usual broadcast partner, Derek Varney. Well, this game was not on the original schedule, and sometimes people have prior commitments. And he's hanging out with Tyler Childers last I checked, and that's not, a bad, that's not a bad alternative. But we're excited to be here. I'm Cal Oaks with none other than Mark Walls. Mark, what are your thoughts on this game? I know you looked at the scores. We talked about it off the air. And, 49, I mean, excuse me, 89 to 28 and 89 to 45 in favor of Scott County during the regular season. That kind of says it all. I mean, the Vegas line on this game is pretty steep. Well, it is. And, and, you know, the one thing for Steve Helton that you come in is you just want him to put them away early. You don't want to let them hang around and give a chance to think they can play with you. So you want to kind of get out there early. But it's tough to beat a team three times in normal conditions when you've beaten them that bad. The biggest thing he's got to get over is that mental hurdle, I think, with his team. If you're Brian Station, you don't really have anything to lose. Like you said, they're they're happy to be here, and like I said, they're not expected to win, so they can pray free. They are, and that they're honestly the last time Scott County lost a district game of any kind, never mind the playoffs, was 2016, the semifinals right here against Bryan Station, 79 to 74 in a semifinal game. Since then, they've won 34 in a row. Most of them have been running clocks. As we mentioned, the two Bryan Station games this year were, they've had more trouble against Henry Clay. They've had some, not trouble, but difficulty kind of stretching it out early, as you said, against the likes of Bryan Station, Frederick Douglass. So I think you're onto something with that quick start. And this team has a, a habit of not coming out of the gate that quickly. We will be back with starting lineups after your national anthem. Back with you, and you know, Mark, and looking over the rosters for these teams, you see on both sides a lot of young, young, young kids. And certainly the difference when you also look at the Scott County side is they have two seniors, one Morgan DeFour, one Malaya Williams, both of whom are going to be playing Division I basketball next year. And Kennedy Tompkins, a junior, who's also in that, uh, in that realm, in that conversation. It just doesn't seem like Bryan Station has anything to match up with that. Well, and, you can, and as you can look at, just not talking about age, but they also don't have the size when you look at Thompson and Williams. But, you know, the only thing I go back to is the old Al McGuire. Al McGuire. They are now sophomores and juniors now. They're not freshmen and sophomores. So by this time of year, they've got game experience, so they ought to use it to their advantage. My guess is, in, in watching Scott County historically, over the years, if you try to run with them, you better be able to put the ball in the hole because they're going to run you out of the gym. And I think that's what gets Brian Station in some trouble as they try to run with them. And 
I just can't do that. I think, and that's that's exactly right. I think Henry Clay has tried to, some things to slow them down, especially in the district final. And you notice whenever they played them every year, the games got closer and closer. With Bryan Station, they just sort of do what they do. They don't try to reinvent the wheel. But that causes you a lot of problems when you're playing a team of Scott County's nature who has outscored the rest of the state by about five points per game. They're averaging once again in the mid-70s which is unheard of for girls or boys basketball really in this day and age. A lot of teams like to play zone. A lot of teams like to play that half-court game to the point where a lot of people will want to cry for a shot clock, but this Scott County team doesn't need a shot clock. No, I don't know that they could put one low enough for him to get a shot off. I mean, his philosophy is get as many shots up as possible and as quick as possible, and, and that's what I'm saying. You normally try to press a team to, to create turnovers, but when you play Scott County, you're playing into their hands because they like to run. They're going to pull it up and take the unorthodox three. They're not going to do the normal reverse the ball, and if you're not ready for that, and they're hit, if, and, they, and typically they are a very good shooting team. And if they're on, man, you're, before you know it, you're down 20 and, and you, you can't have to come out quick enough. Exactly right. When Morgan DeFore has the ball 30 feet from the basket, she can she can fire away or she can lob a pass into Malaya Williams or, or Kennedy Tompkins for an easy two. So a lot of options there, and the way know, they do things. And, you know, the Williams girl, I've seen them play her several times this year, and it's just amazing to me because with that size, you can't underestimate and say she can't hit the three, and she can put the ball on the floor and go around you. I think she's really going to be something special over the next four years. Whoever gets her is going to get a really good player. Yeah, basically the second most prolific three-point shooter on the team behind Morgan DeFore, of course. Uh, Steve Helton doesn't like it when teams try to slow his team down. I don't think he feels comfortable with it, so it'll be interesting to see if Bryan Station tries anything of that sort. Yeah, it will really be interesting. Most teams, if that's not your style and you try to do it, you struggle. So that's the other thing for Bryan Station to watch out. If he's going to try that and that's not their normal gig, then like you said, they're going to struggle trying to hold it, and that usually results in turnover. Players to watch for Bryan Station, number three, Tori Godoy. She's averaging 16.8 points per game. She's hit 57 threes on the season. And Aaliyah and Tania Woodall. Scott County wins the tap, but Kennedy Tompkins shuffles her feet on the way to the basket. So an early turnover for SC. Bryan Station with the ball. Aaliyah Woodall inbounds, and Godoy will push it up quickly. So I guess that answers our question about slowing it down. <laughs> Rihanna Marshall will kick it out to Escarlas Perez. Now Perez cross court to Tori Godoy. And Malaya Williams guarding Tania Woodall up top. But here comes the trap. So he's not going to let them sit and pan and run their offense. He's going to force them to, to try to move the ball and beat them off the dribble. They are trying to slow it down a little bit in this half court set. They've held it for about 30 seconds. The drive on the dish back outside. Now Woodall to Woodall. A hook shot is off and Malaya Williams grabs the rebound and pushes up quickly for SC. Coast to coast, Malaya goes and will draw the contact from Rihanna Marshall. And that'll send her to the line for two. You talked about Malaya Williams' three-point prowess, but another thing that's surprising at six foot four is the way she can just move up and down the court and take it all by herself like that. Yeah, she's just, uh, I mean, that's a dimension. When you start looking at, you compare the UK's roster, I mean, she's every bit as athletic as some of the wings that he's got up there. and. Like I said, I think somebody's going to get a really good player. She's gotten some looks from ACC-type level schools, Syracuse being one of them that comes to mind, a lot of mid-majors as well. Hasn't committed yet as she misses both free throws. Rebound goes to Tania Woodall. Malaya, basically a newcomer to this game, really didn't start playing it seriously until she got to high school. Bryant Station working the ball outside. We've gone nearly a minute without either team scoring here. Now inside to Aaliyah Woodall, and she will miss long but get her own rebound. It is blocked and recovered by Tompkins. KT will slow it down, now loses her dribble, and it's knocked out of bounds by Godoy. It will stay with SC. That's not who you want <laughs> holding the ball in the backcourt, generally speaking, is, is Kennedy Tompkins. Probably you want to see Morgan DeFour running the point, as she is now. 6.45 to play, first quarter, still no score. Little 2-3 zone this time from Bryan Station. They'll try to mix it up, I'm sure, lob pass into Williams. She's fouled again and will go to the line. Aaliyah Woodall will commit that one. So the strategy, uh, pretty obvious for both teams. SC wants to work the ball inside and take advantage of Malaya Williams' size, but Bryan Station's gonna hack her and make her run it from the line. The old hack-a-shack philosophy, I guess. She makes the first, puts SC on the board and breaks the ice in this one. Almost a minute and a half gone. That's unusual for the Lady Cardinals. 
Williams makes both this time around, two zip. Yeah, and if you look at that, Cal, to that point, that's the one Achilles heel that if you think Scott County may have it is they only shoot 64% from the line. So as you get into tournament time, free throws become more and more important. So Bad foul on the backcourt as Kennedy Tompkins kind of fouled 60 feet from the basket and kind of came up limping a little bit as she kind of a little bit of a hip check there, I think, and she got the worst of it even though she was called for the foul. Now she gets the steal, however, and nice pass to DeFore, head her dribbles behind her back. What a move. That's, nice. That's what she does. Morgan DeFore averaging 23 points per game. All region first team along with Malaya Williams, who was the player of the year. And there's going to be a chance for a three-point play for Rihanna Marshall as Brian Station breaks the press and gets on the board. Sometimes Scott County's press isn't as uh, effective as you would think it would be with the, uh, the athleticism that they have. Well, if you, the, the key to that, if you're going to press, you can't let them beat the first trap because then everybody's scrambling to play from behind. Missed free throw and a long pass from DeFore to Kaylee Wise, also a starter along with Emma Price, we should mention, as we didn't really talk about them in the pregame. Malaya Williams gets her hand or finger on the ball. It's knocked out by Bryant Station. It will stay with the Lady Cardinals. 5.57 to go, first quarter. Kaylee Wise inbounds to Malaya for a 10-footer. It's good. That's just too easy. And there's that range you talked about. and uh, She's just deadly off of inbounds plays, whether it's a lob pass inside or that jumper like that. Price on the floor, try to make the steal. She will. She'll get it to KT. Tompkins inside to Williams. It's tipped by Brian Station and off of Malaya. Nice play by Tania Woodall to get back and create the turnover in return for a turnover. And Kennedy just needs to shoot that ball right there. That's a little too close quarters to try to make the pass. Just a wild inbounds pass there off the face of Escarlis Perez, and that's a, 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 a gimme there as it'll go back to Scott County. Kaylee Wise, a junior, multi-sport athlete, inbounds to KT, and Kennedy Tompkins will go to the line to shoot two. Not Scott County's best free throw shooter, but she's streaky. If she makes them from the start of the game, she usually has a good night, so keep our hopes up here. Again, this is not a, a loser leaves town, do or die game, or whatever uh, name you want to put on it. As Tompkins misses the first, both teams are in the 11th region tournament, which will begin Monday night. What they are playing for is a home game in the quarterfinals and a chance to play one of the district runner-ups from one of the other districts, as Tompkins makes the second free throw for a 7-2 Scott County lead. Yeah, and what that does is it, you know, it makes tonight a little bit of fun. There's some pressure to try, like you said, to get that loser in the in the draw of the 11th region in a home game. Steal but, by Williams there. But since both teams go, it's it's not like the first round where it's go home or, or, or advance. So, like I said, it's a little bit different pressure tonight. If you win, you get to play the runner-up from the 41st, the 43rd, or the 44th. So uh, still some good teams, certainly, but it's a different look than if you have to play a district champion off the bat. Williams fouled on the breakaway. She'll have to earn them from the line again, makes the first. So she's three for five in only two and a half minutes of action. So clearly a trend here is they're pounding the ball inside effectively. They did that the other night, too, against Sayre early. But she makes them both. She had 21 in the first quarter against Sayre did Malaya in an 83-45 to 45 semifinal victory. 9-2 here, SC on top, Williams with six. Tania Woodall gets it to Tori Godoy, the leading scorer for the Lady Defenders. She's in traffic there, dribbles through nice it though pass. nicely. Nice pass, can't get the layup, but an offensive rebound for Aaliyah Woodall, and she will go to the line. Foul's going to be on Kennedy Tompkins, and that's what Scott County has to guard against in the playoffs. That's the second foul on KT. Is both KT and Malaya, they, they tend to call things a little closer, especially inside. And uh, not, not the depth that maybe this team has had in the past, of course, with a second school opening. So, well, they, and, and like I said, she just needs to get better position, move her feet a little bit. I mean, I like the tandem of. of Tompkins and Williams, they remind me a little bit of what they used to call James Lee and uh, Jack Gibbons, Silk and Steel. I mean, you know, one of them kind of looks like the enforcer and the other one can glide on water, so. Two missed free throws and a rebound for Malaya. Trenise Kenny, who's also in that six foot plus range, has checked in to four with a feathery three pointer and it's 12-2 out the gate. Scott County up with 4.53 and we'll get a timeout for Brian Station and Coach Brian Hall. 
as advertised so far, so far Mark Walls, as uh, Scott County uh, not showing any signs of uh, overlooking this game. No, they've stepped out and done a really good job of taking control early. They just now need to keep focusing on what they're doing and pound the ball inside because I think what's going to eventually happen is it's going to work itself where Morgan's going to get more opportunities like she just had. And if you're Brian Station, you're sitting here thinking, okay, do I let Williams and Thompson score inside or do I let uh, DeFore shoot the three? So, I mean, it's a tough spot for Brian Station right now. Pick your uh, poison. <laughs> yeah, pick your poison. But he's got to figure out something and, and figure it out pretty quick because he can't get down any further than he is right now if he wants to have a chance. We mentioned the second school, and one of their teams is indeed playing uh, right about now or getting ready to tip off at Franklin County at 630. The 41st District Girls Final as Great Crossing will try to pull the upset there against the Lady Flyers. As, uh, either way, they're going to regions in their inaugural season. Great, uh, great start for that program. And, of course, their coach, Glenn Wilson, spent 21 years on the bench with the Heltons, Steve and Tara, and uh, a lot of good players went over there. Bri Brantley McMath, Timothy Williams, just to name a couple. And it's a young group, one junior playing right now and just a cast of sophomores, freshmen, and eighth graders. So there's a steal by Malaya Williams. One of the two seniors on this Scott County team. Ball is tipped around. Malaya gets it back and one. What a play. And that's all being six foot four right there. And not giving up and just staying with the play. That is relentless footwork and fingertip work there by number four. As she will go to the line for three and say the hard way. And this time it really was. She earned it. Lady Cards in cruise control right now. It was a slow start, took a minute and a half to get on the board, but since then, Williams misses the free throw there. They've put up 14 in about two minutes. Bryant Station just struggling at the rim. They miss another one there. A rebound and a foul. Leah Woodall will go back to the line where she missed two last time. Foul's gonna be on Trenise Kenny. Nisi transferred from Harrison County this year. You'll also see a couple other players, Ken and Owens, who came into the program, and Malia Moore, they've been nice additions. Also, Tyra Young has really come on strong here the second half of the season. You'll see her off the bench tonight. Another missed free throw for Woodall. Station struggling from short range and from the line, and uh, some of that's just, I'm sure, the nerves of being in this game. You said nothing to lose, but it's hard to tell young kids that. Yeah, exactly, and the thing about it is once you start missing free throws, it's kind of like an avalanche. It just keeps going, and they've had, they've had enough opportunities at the line that this could be a different, different case of, of closeness if they were together, but... Like I said, they've just allowed Scott Kennedy to further, for, further advance the lead right now. Price took a wild shot. Kenny got the offensive rebound. It's Mia Woodall committed the foul for the Lady Defenders, and they already that's have six team fouls, so the rest are going to be bonus situation. And that's Woodall's third, and I'm not for sure that's what Brian Station's head coach wanted at this time, but see her on the bench with three nope. in the first quarter. She's their most prolific three-point shooter with 68 on the season, averages 13.2 points per game. There's an air ball from... Morgan, she'll have those once in a while, but then she'll have a streak of four or five in a row, and uh, you understand why she takes them. You definitely live with that. Yeah, that's part of the, uh, and that's modern basketball too, the three's better than two philosophy. Yeah, Patino brought that in with the three when he took Providence to the Final Four, and it's changed the game forever. Certainly all the statisticians and analysts, uh, we'll talk about analytics, that's what they'll tell you, corner three is the best shot in basketball. There was another turnover for Brian Station. And no shots working for them right now. No passings are working for them. DeFore drives to the baseline, now kicks it back out to Wise. She thinks better of the three and gives it up to Price, who makes it 17 to two. Halfway through this first quarter, and it is all Scott County. Steal by Wise, inside to Malaya. Hook shot is good. That's what I'm saying, that's just unfair. Yeah, this is uh, women playing as girls right now. <laughs> That's a drive and a miss and a Kenny rebound. Kenny will dribble it up to DeFore, who fires the pass to Williams. It's too easy. Well, and that's right there. That's, that may be the most intriguing thing about her at the next level is her ability to get from end to end like that. She just outran everybody in a great pass by Morgan DeFore. An absolute throttling so far with 336 still remaining in the first quarter. 21 to two, Scott County leads it.
Just a tough spot for this Bryan Station team. Godoy is a junior. Aaliyah Woodall is a junior. Tania Woodall is a sophomore. Rihanna Marshall is a senior. But they, uh, the thing to remember, they're a good basketball team, Mark. They're, they're 12 and 18. They, had, they, they won 12 games. You win 12 games in Kentucky, I don't care who you're playing. You've done something. You've knocked off Henry Clay to get here. You've earned the right. But this just shows how head and shoulders right now Scott County is above this 42nd district. Yeah, it's just a different level right now. And, and again, when you're Brian Station coming in here like this, you've got to play almost the perfect game, which means you hit your layups, you hit your free throws, and you have no turnovers. You All know, those it, things have not been true. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about the three, and you're absolutely correct with what all the people do and the statisticians and the change of the game. But free throws and layups still win a lot of high you school betcha. basketball games. I'm a big fan of the old school. And uh, transition, especially in girls basketball, will win you a lot of basketball games. And here's some more as Kenny gets the steal up ahead to Price all alone. Yeah, that's 23-2. Uh, to two, My goodness. And just like the press, you know, right now those turnovers are coming on the front end. So Scott County doesn't have to run very far to get back on the offensive Kenny side. Kenny with another steal. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting those, and they're, and they're. Oh, it, nice pass. Yes. That is a nice pass. Beautiful pass by DeFore to Kenny, who will go to the line. And like you say, they're getting those steals. Oh, there's a technical. Is it going to be a double technical? I don't know. Maybe some jarring back and forth. I'm not sure what they called here. They're pointing at Trenise Kenny, and they're also pointing at Aaliyah Woodall. Gonna sort this out here. If that is a technical and a personal on Woodall, she'll also have three. And now we got both coaches being called to the table. Refs trying to take control of a game that's already 23 to two. Uh, you can write your own punchlines to that, <laughs> I guess. It had to be verbal because yeah. there, was no, there was no flagrant foul. There was no pushing or shoving. There's definitely. I mean, I mean, it seems like Trenise Kenny's acting like the guilty party here for Scott County. I don't know what uh, what all brought it on. To get back to what you were saying, the turnovers that Scott County's creating, they're getting a running start with all of them. Like yeah. every time they're facing toward their basket when they get their hands on the ball, and it's just an easy two from there. Yeah, like I said, the front end of the press, if you have it, they're shooting layups before Bryan Station can even get in the get in bounds. And then, like you said, in the front court, they're all occurring on the outside of the three-point line. Well, at that point, Bryan Station's got three defenders inside the inside the paint and inside the elbow. They can't get back quick enough. It's a three-on-one or a three-on-none fast break every time. I believe they did call a foul on Nisi because they posted her second on the board, and she's still standing there kind of like, what did I do? But she's going to take a couple of free throws, and then I think Bryan Station... I think that'll. I think the technicals will offset, actually, kind of like in football. I've seen this happen a couple of times this year. It almost seems like it's a point of emphasis as far as the taunting and stuff. So that probably is what it was. Right, but it had to be verbal because there was right. there was no, at least significant gesture of in your face or anything that you would normally think of as in that case. Kenny makes the first at any rate to make it 24 to two. Still 3:02 to play in the first quarter. To answer your question, if you're viewing this and wondering, the running clock is 35 points, but it doesn't start until the second half. Kenny makes both, and she will check out. Kylie Bartholomew will come into the game. Tyra Young has also checked in, along with Ken and Owens, players that we mentioned before. Good news about a game like this is you get a lot of players acclimated to tournament time. Exactly. And get them on the floor. And it is different. If you've never played in it, it is it is different. Even in your own gym on a night like this, the crowd is just bigger than what you're used to. The noise, the pressure. Even though this is not the this is not a game that's absolutely a must win. There is still pressure. You uh, want to be champions of your district. In the case of Scott County, it would be the fourth year running. As we mentioned, a 34-game winning streak against those district rivals, and I would venture to say 30 of them have been right running clock. Ryan Station, again, taking its time. Why not? At this point, now they'll fire up a three that's way off the mark and off the hands, but recovered by Victory Sledge. That's a great name. She saved it, and now they'll get it back to Godoy for a reset. Godoy will drive in heavy traffic. Ball is bouncing around into the hands of Kylie Bartholomew for the Lady Cards, who will get it ahead to Morgan DeFore, who will run the break. Thought she might pull up a three, and then she carried it. 
She was kind of trying to decide whether to shoot a three or drive or dish. And uh, I know. I thought she pulled it off, though. I thought so, too. I think sometimes girls don't get away with making athletic moves that they allow boys to make, and yes. it frustrates the heck out of me. Because I, I thought she pulled that off with a pretty good move with the hesitation without turning it, but Mr. Coletta thought a different story. Wild pass, but recovered by Makari Murphy. Now Godoy inbounds to victory. Sledge, nice move by Sledge, but she couldn't finish it. Bartholomew with a rebound to four, up ahead to Price for another uncontested layup. And that right there, I mean, that's just unselfish basketball because, uh, you know, Morgan DeFore immediately threw it up the floor, and as a coach, you got to be happy about that because you're sharing the basketball and getting easy, easy layups. What I've seen from Morgan lately the past month or so is a lot of double-digit assist games, and you're seeing it tonight. She's well on her way to that already. The only thing that's going to keep the stats down tonight would be a running clock or the fact that uh, the starters are probably going to sit much of the second quarter and probably the fourth as well. 25-point lead. We are still in the first period with a minute and a half to play. A couple of free throws here from Akari Murphy as Tyra Young was called for her first foul, and Murphy puts the lady defenders on the board for the first time in a while. Rihanna Marshall had the other two way back early in this period. Gary Murphy, a freshman, so they've got some young talent, as does Henry Clay, as does Frederick Douglass. So after this year, you've got to think with the graduation of these two seniors for Scott County with about 3,500 points between them, it's going to be a little tougher. There's a drive for Kenan Owens and an offensive board for Tyra Young. Third chance maybe tipped out of about No, it will stay with Scott okay. County. Might have got a break right there. Yeah, I thought, I thought maybe out. too. It looked like that was out on the white. but A lot of arms flailing around. Tough to see for us and them. Although Owens uh, looks like she can handle the basketball pretty good. She can. She kind of started the season as the de facto point guard, but uh, as, as things shook out, it's become DeFore's position. I think Coach Helton wanted DeFore to have the freedom to roam on the wing, but uh, this offense certainly clicks a lot better with her running the point. There was a travel for Owens there. 102 to play, first quarter, 27 of four. Scott County leads it well on its way to district supremacy. We'll have the boys game tonight starting at roughly 8 o'clock. There's a nice press break in the half court and a foul on Bartholomew. Going to send to Shauna Jackson to the line. Not a fast-moving first quarter by any stretch of imagination. That's the 16th foul that has been called. It's been split evenly between the two teams. Jackson misses. Rebound, Bartholomew. Guess it was a one-on-one. -on -one. They called the foul on the floor, and there's going to be another bonus situation for Bree Penny, who has checked into the game for Scott County. Right now you've got Penny, Young, Bartholomew, Owens, and Moore. So a fresh five on the floor, not a senior among them for Scott County. Penny misses. The free throw opportunity. Bryan Station rebounds under a minute, down to 45 seconds now. Good defensive quarter for Scott County, but some of it self-inflicted as Bryan Station's missed a lot at the rim. Although, certainly in the land of giants, you're going to do that. There's a layup for Victory Sledge. 27-6, football score. There's a nice right. runner by Moore, the eighth grader. Malia Moore transferred up from Somerset over the summer. Bryant Station breaks the pressure again, gets it inside to Sledge, partially blocked and rebounded by Bree Penny. Penny's going to take it the distance. Now she'll dish to Young, and Young's going to get called for the walk. Yeah, and in that situation, she needs to <coughs> make penetrate too far. Yeah. If she stops at the free throw line, she's either got a nice jumper. If the defender comes to her, then she can kick it. Or lob it inside. <coughs> yeah, but by going too far with the dribble, she took her passing lane away. But those are things that young players learn, and to your point, this is a good game to do it in because, you know, it's in the tournament, it counts. And Godoy took a wild three that was nowhere near the mark, and at the end of one quarter, Scott County leads it 29-6 over the Bryan Station Lady Defenders. Twelve points from Malaya Williams in that opening quarter. Want to, of course, mention that you're watching this game on NFHS Network through the uh, 
combined efforts of the Bird's Nest Broadcasting Network, which is a, an effort between NFHS and NewsGraphic.com, where we provide the audio feed as well. I'm Cal Oaks with Mark Walls, and we want to thank, of course, my publisher, Mike Scoggin, and our producer-director, James Scoggin, photographer as well, down there on the court getting it done. want to encourage you to read all about it in the News Graphic online this weekend and Tuesday in the print edition. want to thank our sponsor, Bluegrass Orthopedics, Burger King, Galvin's on Main, Green's Toyota of Lexington, Georgetown Community Hospital, West Banco, DMKCPA, Clark's Pump and Shop, Georgetown College, Brickhouse Properties, People's Bank, Steve Skewerman, Kentucky Furo, uh, Farm Bureau Insurance, and so many more. We'll get to as the night goes on. We're underway in the second quarter here as another foul against Malaya Williams. And now, after this one, both teams will be in a double bonus for the duration of what will be a very slow first half which is funny because Scott County has broken out to a 29-6 lead, but a lot of stoppages in play. Tania Woodall, part of the sister act. I believe they're sisters, Aaliyah and Tania. She makes the first free throw. She's averaging, as we said, she's in the game with three fouls right now, which is risky, but what do you got to lose, right? Well, yeah, and the way she shoots that free throw, you can tell she's a pretty good shooter, so she's got to stay on the floor for offense, but... That's a tough assignment to get in there under, underneath and battle Williams and Tompkins as Tompkins misses on the rebound. Wise took a three, Tompkins took a, a second opportunity. Both were short and Brian Station came away with it. Godoy up ahead to Marshall who, and Godoy fired away for a three and a rebound for Williams. Sorry, that was Emily Gomez, not Rihanna Marshall. Williams will pull up for three and it's good. We mentioned her ability to hit that shot. She's done it all year long. She, did it again tonight. She hit three or four in the first half against Sayre. 32 to seven, another bad pass and a steal by Wise. Gets it ahead to Tompkins, up in front to Williams, who will go to the line once more. That's the 10th foul on Bryant Station. It's gonna be two shots from here on out. Malaya Williams. She's in that rare club in Kentucky women's girls basketball, 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Certainly not a lot of Scott County people have done it. There's been a lot of girls that have done one or the other. Of course, Morgan DeFore is up around the 2,500 point mark now as she's trying to chase down the likes of Rebecca Gray and Yukari Figs, the all-time leaders in this program, both both in the neighborhood of 3,000. And there's a nice runner by Godoy. That's her first two points of the night, averaging a team high 16.8. And there's gonna be a turnover as Wise couldn't track it down. Godoy will come away with it. No danger here, but Bryan Station is threatening to hit double digits. They're down well, 25. And the, but, but that kind of pass right there, to be honest with you, you don't wanna force that because it wasn't open. That's an unnecessary tur turnover where you lose a possession not going to affect you tonight, but it could affect you next week uh, in the regional tournament. I think that's the thing that bothers Steve Helton the most about playing in this district, and it's nothing against any team, but you can develop a lot of bad habits. There was a beautiful bounce pass from DeFore, but the reverse layup attempt, just Price got caught a little too far underneath the basket there. And Brian Station rebounded it. Ticking down to about six minutes to play in the first half, 34-9, Scott County in control. Pretty impressive when your 6'4 post player can go Playing guard outside, point guard. Yeah. Shooting outside, defending outside. And there's just a, a reach-in foul that she yeah, didn't probably need to do. No, that's that's one you look at her and say, why? That's her second. That's the team's tenth, so double bonus both ways now. Another eighth grader, Irene, Irene Persley, will check into the game for the Lady Cardinals. So they've had two eighth graders play in this game. Get a, speaking of eighth graders and young players, we'll get a great crossing score at halftime of this one as they started a little bit later in Franklin County. Both teams will be playing the 11th region quarterfinals on Monday night, and there is an off chance they could play each other, which neither coach wants to hear. <laughs> no. No, let's let the rubber match come later if it has to. Let's like the, like the finals. Yeah, let's let both schools have a chance to get to the finals. They say it's a blind draw, but, uh, you know, every year it just seems like 
there's some things that are fishy about it, both at the region and state level. They like to get those early matchups and just make you want to pull your hair out. There's a beautiful pass to Persley from DeFore. She can't finish, though. The young player missing the layup. But it was a nice penetration move by DeFore to, to get the open layup. And uh, those are the kind you wish that she would get rewarded on because that's not going to show up in the stats. But she does so much more to control the game and, and make an impact than just scoring. Everybody thinks of her as a scorer because the two players you mentioned a while ago, Rebecca Gray and Yukari Figs, that's rare air in this county. Sure I mean, is. And, and you're talking about her being When you up got there banners that, with your name on it in the gym. <laughs> that's rare fight air. And uh, like I said, that's a different class. But, but as you can see, there's different ways she impacts the game. It's an interesting lineup right now. Persley is the only non-starter in there. As the four fires a floater off the glass, no good. Bounces out to Price, however. But Price loses it. Good defense from Godoy forced the turnover there. 4.59 remaining. So a little bit of an iffy start to this second period. It was 29-6, to six, and it's only been a 5-3 margin for Scott County since the break. Yeah, we've got some confusion because we've got two Scott County kids guarding the same player, so somebody was open. Brian Station just couldn't see it. Hook shot by Marshall off the rim was no good. Now there's a scramble, and Marshall will get the steal at this end. Headed back the other way for the Lady Defenders, trying to outrace Price, who will commit the foul. So Marshall to the line. The clock stops again with 4.35 left in the half. The boys game, I won't promise you it'll be closer, but I'm going to guess and, and safely bet that it will be. And we're kind of due for a close one there. As all three regular season games weren't really that much in doubt. The closest one was a six-point margin for SC. And Douglas won by double digits couple of times including the Toyota Classic Marshall made both free actually the Toyota Classic was a nine point margin but it was a it was 25 what? point gap at one point yeah before. it was it, the final score of the Toyota Classic championship game is not reflective of how the game no. played out no it was not it, it was uh, uh, it was desperation mode for SC and they were getting a lot of points a lot of freebies at the end I think nice pass inside from Wise to Tompkins and that's what Scott County needs to kind of get in its uh, normal frame of mind here and pounding the ball back inside yeah, they just need to make they need to make them come out of the zone or do something different. They just need to keep going inside. Ball knocked away by DeFore, recovered by Woodall, now stolen by Moore, Malia Moore, up ahead to DeFore. She's all alone. She'll stop behind the three-point line, now pick it up and give it back to Tompkins. Tompkins dribbles toward the baseline, and she gets fouled by Marshall. It's a foul fest here at SCHS in the 42nd District Girls Championship. Bryan Station hasn't been able to take advantage on its end. And Scott County now trying to pad a 25-point lead with KT at the line. Tompkins misses the first front rim. Bend a little bit more to knees, a little more lift. She's another one. We talked about Malaya Williams being new to the game. Kennedy Tompkins, we've said it on the broadcast before, was a cheerleader until middle school and kind of was... Uh, Kind of was lured to this game, I'm sure, by the Heltons, and particularly Tara, as she makes the second free throw. And they've made her, uh, developed her. As her God-given abilities have also helped make her into uh, a college prospect. She's obviously at six feet, very mobile, and eats up space there as well. Pretty much a double-double every time out when she can stay out of foul trouble. Yeah, and the thing about it with both those ladies coming to the game late, the one thing that they'll is go away and hit the three. Uh, you'll start learning not to make that silly foul. Nice pass from DeFore to Wise for the finish. Kaylee gets on the board for the first time tonight, 39 to 14. But once you learn, you know, to, to not pick up the silly stuff and stay in the game, then you're going to see a, even more production off that stat line. Two more misses in close for Brian Station. Lead to a DeFore three-pointer. She has two of those and eight points total. And they've tripled up Bryan Station to this point, 42 to 14. Three minutes left in the half. Dribbling out of difficulty as Perez gets it ahead to Marshall, picks up her dribble and dishes back to Perez, finds Godoy up top, guarded by Moore over in the corner to Marshall. Off the rim, no good. Tompkins rebound. She's going to threaten to dribble the distance. She will spin and put it up and off. Rebound, Sania Woodall. And again, you just don't expect to see that out of post players, and that's a huge advantage for Scott County. When you get the rebound and start the fast break, 
that's a huge advantage versus having to try to locate the guard all the time. A nice layup there for Victory Sledge, her second basket. But again, nobody wants to get in your way if they see Malaya Williams or Kennedy Tompkins coming up the court like that with a full head of steam. Two chances there, three-pointer, but a four offensive nice rebound for move. Wise. And a third chance for Tompkins, who cleans up the mess for a 44-16 advantage. That was a nice reverse pivot. Everybody thought she was going outside on Brian Stacey's side. She just reversed in one power dribble and layup. Marshall from the baseline, no good. Rebound again for Tompkins. It's one and done most of the time for Brian Station lately. And a little touch foul there by Godoy will send the four to the line. Be the first trip there for her tonight. 80% shooter. She gets it done at the line. She gets it done behind the arc. She gets it done as a passer, and she gets it done on the fast break. Certainly a complete player. And uh, headed to Moorhead State on scholarship, where she'll play for Coach Todd, the uh, state championship uh, leader of the Lexington Catholic program in days of yore. Oh, yeah, that, that brings back some memories. Worst day in Scott County basketball history, <laughs> man, 2006. <laughs> they had some good teams on both sides of the ledger, oh, did man. Catholic at that point in time. So DeFore makes one of two. That was some battles. Catholic up beat Scott County in the afternoon finals, and Madison Central beat, ball beat ball the boys that ball. night. So. Just brutality there. As Godoy with the driving layup, seven this quarter for her, gets it to 27. DeFore with a floater, no good. Kelsey Hall at her hands on the rebound, but it slipped out. We'll go back to Bryant Station. Minute 27 to play in the half. Kenan Owens checks back in. We'll replace the four. She'll probably get a chance to relax and drink some Gatorade for the rest of the half. Extended halftime for her along with Williams and Tompkins as we have a whole new five in there once again traveling on station. Yeah, they, she, she decided she was going to throw it. And when Scott County showed up in the passing lane, she'd already committed. She uh, didn't have anywhere else to go. Three-point attempt from Malia Moore is long. Cammy Sargent with the rebound. Now Hall gets it. No. Rebound to Marshall. And Brian Station is basically starters against second and third team here for Scott County as they nurse this 27-point lead into the half. About a minute to play. Baseline drive. Wild shot. Rebound for Owens. Owens tripped up by Godoy, and she'll get a chance to shoot two. You know, when you watch Scott County play, you just got to imagine, of course, now, I've seen him practice, so when I say this, I don't want to practice, but he would be a fun coach to play because everybody's got the green light to shoot. So when you get a rebound, you, you, you got to be on your toes if you're Brian Station or any other team because they're going to turn around and fire it. They're not going to pull it back out and set it back up and try to find one or two players. Everybody's got the green light. You see, you see Coach Steve Helton, you talk to him about practice, you start to see the evil gleam in his eye. He just loves practice. <laughs> I watched one day, and I, I told some of the boys off the boys' program, I said, y'all need to stay out of this gym because I said, right. they, you ain't going to be able to do what these girls do. I needed an oxygen tank watching them. One of two for Owens, Kenan Owens. That's her first point of the game, 46-18. to 18. Pass mishandled, tipped out of bounds, I think. Nope, it's going to go to Scott County. I thought maybe he was going to stay with Station. Tyra Young was there, but it went off of Marshall. Yeah, they're going to they're going to give it back to Scott County. Referees convened there. Keep Coach Elton. Nope. Now them. they're giving it to Station. Nope. What are they yeah, going to do? Gonna they don't know. It. Yeah. Coach Elton kind of smiling. He said, "I got one down there in front of it that gave it to me, and the one out front says it always goes to Green." Another miss down low. Scramble on the floor between Malia Moore and Rihanna Marshall. This one will go to Scott County, as the possession arrow says so. We'll have the Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance Steve Skirman player of the game after this one. Looks right now like Malaya Williams would certainly be a candidate in her first half. There's a nice shot by Cammie Sargent. It's a three, uh, two pointer, so 48 to 18. She was just inside the arc. There's a three for Marshall. That's, that's, her, that's her first long-range shot of the game. She only averages 5.7 points. We've seen her miss a lot from down low, but she was true on that one from outside. There is another attempt that's no good by Sergeant, rebounded by Escarlas Perez up ahead to Godoy, who will fire at the horn. No good. 48 to 21. Scott County leads it going into the break.
We will have your halftime stats shortly as James Goggin usually runs those up to us with great dispatch. As the band plays on. A festive atmosphere right now and with good reason as the Scott County Lady Cardinals well on their way to their fourth consecutive 42nd district title. And they would have a top seed in another home game on Monday night against, I would say there's a good chance it could be Berea or it could be, I'm trying to think who the finalists are in the 43rd. It's, Tates Creek and Dunbar. It, yep, so it could be Berea, Tates Creek, and Great Crossing would be the three best candidates, to be yeah. honest. And you're hoping, that you're hoping, like I said, it's Berea or Tates Creek. <laughs> they have beaten Tates Creek handily. Of course, they've beaten Great Crossing handily twice, but for a lot of reasons, nobody really wants to see that. Berea, don't think they've played. There's probably a good reason they haven't played in basketball, and that would probably be, I say on paper, the maybe the widest margin of the three. 20 points for Malaya Williams to go with seven rebounds in that first half. She was perfect from the field, six for six. Emma Price with seven, Morgan DeFore with six to go with three assists. Kennedy Tompkins, six points to go with five rebounds and two points apiece from a bunch. Moore, Surgent, Wise, and Kenny for the total of 48. The card shot an even 50%. They turned it over nine times. They forced or at least harassed Bryan Station into 13 turnovers. The defenders shot 30%. Rebounding was double up, 28 to 14 in favor of the Lady Cards. Scoring for the defenders, Marshall with seven, Godoy with seven, and two each from Sledge. I had Sledge for four. This has Sledge for two to go with Murphy and Jackson with two each, and Tania Woodall with one for the total of 21. Pretty similar to the first two times these teams played. Scott County hung up 89 in both of those. First time it was 89 to 28, second time 89 to 45. This is a little more like the second one, as you'd expect. Bryan Station, the reason they're here, they've earned the right. They played a, a tough game against Henry Clay and came out on top the other night. Anything you've seen here, Mark, to indicate this is going to be anything but a quick uh, a quick kill in the third quarter and then uh, let just let the clock run? No, I think if I'm Coach Helton, I'm telling them let's finish this early, come out of the second half and get this thing to a running clock. And uh, and that's, that's no disrespect to Bryan Station, but you want to get it to a running clock so you can rest your seniors, get your younger kids a chance to play. And what he's done in the second quarter, you know, we talked about some – different lineups. I think he's kind of anticipating saying, well, okay, if I get in foul trouble here and I've got to have these guys playing with the four at the point or Williams and Tompkins playing with Owens at the point, he's just trying to utilize his game experience to kind of get to play with a couple things right now. But yeah, he wants to come out and put this early. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't intensify the press. I mean, that's been a token 2-2-1 press right now for the Cardinals. They really haven't gone after it. I really wouldn't be surprised if he got after him a little bit just to push it to the running clock real early. Yeah, that's usually what he does, and he usually gives the starters the entire third quarter just to keep them sharp. Yeah, this is a hard part. I mean, you know, Bryan Station, as you said, earned the right to be here, but they also earned the right to play Scott County's best, and sometimes that's forgotten in these blowout games. I can remember that's what Coach Hicks would always kind of remind the team. He would say, look, these boys deserve your best effort because they're out there playing hard. So don't watch the scoreboard, play hard. And, and like I said, uh, that, I think that's what Steve's going to impress upon them at halftime. And, uh, you know, with Williams and DeFord, they've been here before. They know what it is. They know what it means to sit over on the bench and get some extra rest between now and Monday and know what next week is going to be. So, you know, it's not going to be anything that those two leaders aren't accustomed to. Certainly, uh, fouls were a story in the first half as a total of 23 were called here. The Woodalls scored one point between them, mostly because of that foul trouble. So when two of your top three scorers aren't able to get it done, that doesn't help you when you're already up against it, against a, a, a strong team such as Scott County. Well, yeah, and when you're sitting on the bench, it's hard to shoot the ball because they don't pass it to you when you're over there. And then, like I said, when the one that the one Williams, their lead best shooter. You know, once you pick up that third foul, you got to come back in the game for offense, but you can't get aggressive on the board. So it just kind of limits you what you can do. It takes a it takes a lot of experience to be able to play at the high school level with three fouls and not pick up that fourth, especially in the first half. Franklin County leads Great Crossing 19 to 12. About four and a half minutes to go in the first half. 
over in Franklin County. So if that one holds, and Franklin County only beat them by six the first time, and the second one was a much wider margin that tightened up late and became an 11 or 12 point game, assuming Franklin County is able to take care of its business and keep its stranglehold on that district and to put Great Crossing in a road game. And as we mentioned, Scott County is a potential opponent for them. Certainly Madison uh, Central, a, a potential opponent for them. And I think Dunbar in the 43rd is another likely one. And so there's some opportunities there. If they, uh, at least in a couple of those matchups, they might be able to, uh, to get a run going. So it's good to see Mark, I think, to have three of the four teams make it to regions in this first year with this new arrangement. Oh, yeah. Gosh darn it, the Great Crossing boys were so close to making it four out of four, too. Yeah, and I know were. that's that's one that's close to your heart and mind. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> you know, they had control of the game with two minutes, and you got to give Frankfurt credit. They never they never quit, and they came back, so you don't want to make that excuse. But, you know, in, in that game, it comes down to what we talked about today. It was turnovers and free throws. That's If you want to break it down into simplistic terms, we just turned the ball over too many times and gave them gave them one too many opportunities and uh, you know they kind of got hot at the right time and you know our turnovers I've, you know I've always been told and it, it rings true it's not that you have a lot of turnovers but it's how close are they and where are they on the floor to your point about the press tonight there were four or five in that great crossings Frankfurt game but that turnover happened right at midcourt but you know three dribbles and you got a layup and yeah. there's no defense so and that just kind of sucks the wind out of you you know, once Frankfurt ramped up the pressure in that game, they didn't have a lot of answers for it. Right. And, and Frankfurt didn't really go to it until it was desperation time. And then it was a 10-point a game with a quarter to play, and it was it was go time, and Frankfurt did go. And, and you know, it, we talk about the pressure, you know, that's the first round of the district. So you don't win, you go home. So, well, you know, all of a sudden you're playing with the lead. You don't want to mess it up, and sometimes you – it's hard to play because you haven't been in that situation. These, you know, these guys at both schools, the seniors, good bunch of kids, you know, they, they played behind a team that went to three straight tournaments, two state finals. So, you know, everybody says, well, they got seniors. Well, they do, but from a playing perspective, they hadn't experienced a lot of that. Some of them had minutes here and there, but, you know, for the most part, they were, they were part of a great program that went to the state tournament and, we just won a lot of minutes there. And you've, you've seen Scott County have to adjust as the season went on, too. Oh, yeah. Great Crossing had seniors, but a lot of them, even this year, in that seven, eight-man rotation, there were three freshmen, for one thing, at the end of the year, and a sophomore. And you're playing a Frankfurt team that's all A runner, runners up. They were semifinalists in the region last year and threw a wicked scare into Scott County. So... They, they've been there. They know what that's like. And sometimes it's tough uh, once that snowball gets rolling to, uh, to to stop it, as you called an avalanche earlier. And, and I'm going to quote Tony Wise, head coach at Franklin County for the boys. You know, the other night after the game, they did a great job of hosting. So standing there just chatting afterwards. And, you know, they were grace, gracious and didn't push everybody out of the gym immediately. But it's just like he said, to your comment about what they won, these kids know how to win. And that was the difference in the game when it when it got to that point. Frankfurt wasn't going to lose because they knew how to win. And sometimes you can only get that by going through the battles. And that's that's where the inexperience kind of showed up a little bit for Great Crossings. But I'm going to tell you, the future's great. Oh, yeah. I think for both schools. But like I said, Great Crossings is, uh, you know, when you look at that <coughs> JV team and the sophomores, you got Caleb Perry, you got the freshman team that won the 11th region, you got the – the middle schools here did well across the board. So depending on how all that shakes out as to who is where, both schools are going to look good here in the next couple They're of years. They're going to say, the, the factor is you could always have people going back and forth, but assuming you don't, you've got a great crossing team that won the freshman 11th region. You've got a Scott County team that won the JV 11th region. So, yes, the future is bright. And I think, you know, you look at the girls' side, this team that's playing for great crossing tonight, as we said, not a senior in sight, only one junior that's playing right now and only one other one on the roster that's injured. And Scott County, most of this team, yeah, they're going to lose two, uh, two dynamic players, but most of this team should be back as well. So a lot to look forward to in 2021 and beyond. A lot to look forward to tonight as we have what we think is going to be a Donnybrook of a boys game as it's round four. I said the other night, Roman numerals, it's IV, and you may need an IV after that game if you're a player in it because it's been physical, it's been emotional, and the more these teams play each other, I think the less they like each other. 
Well, it is, and, and like I said, it's it, and especially being the fourth round, and this is going to be in the district finals, and you don't want to put pressure on any young men, but typically your, 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 your star players, your best players are make the difference in this kind of game because you know each other so well, they're going to look to take over. So if you're Scott County, you look to Taryn Hamilton, you look to Jackson if you're Frederick Douglass, and it may come down to which one of those guys perform the best and the best example I can give you that is the state finals last year between David Johnson and Michael Marino. It came down to the two best players, and, and David Johnson just happened to be a little bit better that day. And uh, you know what? He, I can remember making the comment, he really showed me improvement when he pulled up and hit that three, and it's just evident by what he's doing at the University of Louisville. I think part of it was he had recovered a little better from his midseason injury than Michael yes, had, sir. too. I think that good. gets forgotten. That, uh, you know, Very both, good point. Both yeah. were on the sideline. Michael was not himself. He re-injured it again in the spring even after that season was over and he's just now I think as you can see the improvement in year one at EKU getting back to full strength and it's taken a, a good year. He's doing well down there it's fun to watch that him do so well. It's just fun to watch AW and the turn turnaround that they've had they went from not being in the OVC tournament last year to being a, in a first round bye situation this year it's just incredible. There is a runner for Bryan Station to start the half and getting her own rebound is Tania Woodall getting on the board so Bryan Station no quit in the Lady Defenders, and uh, they're well coached by Brian Hall. He's done a good job of that program. They're up against it tonight for sure, but they uh, they keep playing. There's a nice in pa inside pass from DeFord to Williams. It's knocked away. Now Price recovers, gets it back to DeFord. DeFord will drive uncontested, but can't get it to fall. Just couldn't put it off the window. Tried to get it in off the rim instead, and it just rolled off the left side. I think she was expecting some uh, contact. Contact, and she thought. I think she had one more dribble that she didn't think she was going to be able to have. She it's is a player that likes to get that three-point play and likes to anticipate that contact. It sometimes doesn't work out. As an air ball from Brian Station will give it back to the Lady Cards. Yeah, I know. As, as odd as it seems, when you anticipate it and you don't get it, it's harder to make it than than what you would normally think. So. And now she'll get another chance, and it'll go in and out again. She'll get her own rebound. Dribble behind the arc. Looking again. She, she's determined to get one. Now she dishes to KT for a three. Wow. Kennedy Tompkins with a line drive three-pointer from the left corner. But again, when your post player can step out and shoot a three and make it, I, I mean, that's just, you know, it's it, they don't have the size, so they can't play man-to-man, -man, I understand it, but. You, you can't play zone as well. Scott County shoots three. No, when their bigs do what uh, Malaya and, and Kennedy have done, second chance there again for Brian Station and from just inside the foul line, Olea Woodall will get her first two points tonight. So both Woodalls on the board here in the second half after a foul troubled the first half for each of them. There's a take by Malaya. She'll go to the line as she gets fouled by, I believe, Marshall. Nope, they'll call it on Aaliyah Woodall. That's going to be her fourth, I believe, yes. First foul of the half for either team. Tashauna Jackson will check in for Woodall. Williams will try to add to her 20 points. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> the scoring totals on the sheet differed from mine, but she makes this one. 52 to 25, we do know that. Of course, not at that 35 point threshold yet. That's probably a good thing. It's, it speaks well for Bryan Station, and it gives Scott County a chance to kind of play this straight. And well, yeah, and, it, and it's to your point. They, they've got a good coach, and he's got them ready to play. They're not going to quit, you know. Steal uh, by Morgan, and uh, one. There's the contact yeah. and the layup. And that was frustration. I think you lose the ball, you're a little frustrated, so you reach yeah. out and you pick up a silly foul. Smart thing to do is cut your losses. But, uh, That's exactly right. Make the contact instead and give Morgan a chance. She's still used to getting three from long range. She'll get three. This is for her the easy the way. Old, yeah, the old fashioned way. 56 to 25. So now they are only two buckets away from continuous clock and getting us on target for the 8 o'clock boys game. Nice spin move there, but it's blocked by Wise, recovered by DeFore, and DeFore will lead the break once again. She misses. Price will fight for the rebound. It will come down instead to Marshall. Marshall looks ahead to Jackson, who gets it back to Perez for a three. The Scarless Perez is on the board. Oh, nice look right Beautiful there. Beautiful pass. KT with the finish. 
Just beat everybody down the floor. Again, it's your big out running everybody down the floor. And that's quite an advantage to have, as you say, when your bigs can play defense, when they can shoot, when they can outrun everybody else. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know. Sit over and smile. <laughs> yeah, tip your cap. <laughs> Sit over there and smile for Coach Hilton. Smile for the poster. Brian Station, 30 point deficit. As they try to cut into it here with just over five minutes to play in the third quarter, there's a high pass recovered by Tania Woodall. Inside the Marshall, she'll post up on Wise. No good. Rebound, Williams. Malaya looks to take it the distance. Now she'll pull up for three. Just short. Rebound, KT. Knocked around. It will stay with the Lady Cards. Still can steal. That's it. Twin Towers, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Sampson and uh, Olajuwon. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Uh like I said, it's just a deadly do. Oh, what up for fake? <laughs> faked she her, faked herself out. She faked was so her out of her sneakers and one for KT. The four started that, though. Yeah, what a move. I think she I, she was so wide open, I think she faked herself <laughs> out. Uh, Morgan just, she can make you look bad. As Coach Helton says, it's like chess versus checkers. She's, she's thinking a move ahead of everybody else on the court, including her teammates sometimes. Yeah. Well, like I said, she, everybody in the gym knew she was going to kick it back to Williams for the three-point thing. And when she spun, man, she could have gone to Dairy Queen and back. There was nobody close to her. 61 to 28. If you're doing the math, that's 33. Miss, rebound by Tompkins, long pass, caught by Williams, mishandled, then recovered, then to DeFour, knocked away by Perez. DeFour recovers for a three, it's no good, but Tompkins there's there, steal. and there's your running clock. There's with steal. 426 remaining in the third quarter, so it runs for the duration. And you gotta remember, she started that fast break with the rebound and the outlet pass. Plays hard, gets up and down the floor. That's just fun to watch because, I mean, sometimes you watch the NBA and you watch some of the guys. You know, if, if you get up and down the floor and hustle, a lot of good things are going to happen just because you're, you're up and down the floor. You know, when these guys and gals kind of walk up the floor for whatever reason, you know, you get upset because you're not involved, but you got to get up and down the floor and good things happen. A miss and then a throwaway, which leads to a three by Godoy. 10 for her for the game. She's having a nice little game. Long there. pass to Wise. Kaylee Wise has quietly had a nice night at both ends of the floor. A couple of buckets, but on the defensive end, she has altered shots, gotten some defensive boards. She couldn't alter that one from Godoy. <laughs> Coach Hicks has shown up with the grandson. Mr. Wilder's in the gym. Good to see you, man. 50, uh, 67 to 31 as we had that little break in the in the commentary to say hi to the living legend winner of a thousand plus Mr. Billy Hicks Brian Station got a bunch of players in serious foul trouble now three it's starters a, or four so another rebound for Kaylee Wise and a pass from Price to the four can't finish but, but Tompkins can, will no oh. he misses short and a rebound for Victory Sledge Gets a little careless, I think, in a game like this. Yeah, Morgan, I think, was a little bit frustrated there with the miss on the other end, kind of tried to get it back. Picked up a cheap one. There is another miss layup, a rebound, another miss, and another rebound for Wise, tied up. Possession error will go to the defenders. They can't buy a break right now. <laughs> Do a pretty good job of tying that up, and it's Scott County's possession. Great crossing has tightened it up to 28 to 20 at the half over oh, in nice Franklin pass. County. There is another easy two. You know you can't let for Malaya. Malaya. You know if you're gonna if you're gonna play man to man, you can't let her come across the lane untouched because if she gets low post position, you you can't stop her. You know if you're Glenn Wilson and you told me you'd be that close at the ch district finals against Franklin County, the powerhouse in that district for girls basketball, I think you'd be happy. I think they made a nice run to get back in it. It was 28-13 before a 7-0 run as Bryant Station scores again. Morgan DeFore on a nice move, the left-hand layup. DeFore easily converting at the other end as her point total's picking up in a hurry. 
And again, at this point, there's Tompkins. All academic KT, all by her lonesome. Yeah. 71 to 35, Lady Cards putting it to the defenders. It's going to be another title for SC. The only question now is what will be the final score? A little bit of a trap there. They fight through it to the defenders. Now have a chance for a three-point play as Deshaunna Jackson will go to the line. Yeah, right there, uh, Tompkins got uh, got caught leaning a little much trying to intercept it again. Brian Stacey tonight, a nice little backdoor cut there, a nice pass uh, for the possible three-point play. Left-hander's got a nice little touch. Missed the free throw, rebound for Malaya. Oh, Williams wow. will take it the distance and get fouled. I'll give Victory Sledge credit. She tried to stay in front, but she took the worst end of that brunt. Brooklyn Miles with 11 for the Lady Flyers in that other game. Five points each for Braley McMath and Olivia Tierney to lead GC. Malaya Williams at the line here trying to build on a 35-point lead. This is the free throw. Baseline drive, threatened to drive the baseline and thought better of it. There's a drive and a block by Morgan DeFour and a Look long pass. pass up ahead to Lele. <laughs> this one's over, folks. We got another eight minutes to play, but it's all just for cosmetics. Tipped and stolen. Williams to Tompkins to DeFour. Missed it, got a little too far underneath the basket there. Time yep. ticking away, 3-2-1. Attempt by Godoy is good at the horn, a 30-footer. 74 to 40, your score after three. Starters still sitting on the bench like they're going to get up and at least start the fourth quarter for Scott County. I don't know if I'd be inclined to maybe give them the rest of the night off. I'm just superstitious that way, I guess. Well. <laughs> but you can get hurt crossing the street, right? So. Yeah, but but to your point, yeah. It, uh, at this point with the running clock, they, and Brian Station just doesn't shoot the even in the best case scenario, if there was a chance, they just don't shoot the ball well enough to give them that chance. No. I, you said them. I don't think you come back with them, but it's sure. Looks like Morgan may be out unless she doesn't. She never usually sits. sits? Okay. She likes to stand and drink from her water bottle. And yeah, yeah. she's just still in the game along with Price, Tompkins, that starters. Williams, and Wise, the starting five. And the same goes for Brian Station right now. So we're going to play it straight for a little while longer, I guess. Coach Helton having an animated conversation with the officials about something in a 34-point game. I don't know what. Maybe they're asking where's a good place to eat. Yeah, maybe. Missed by Price. Long rebound in traffic by Tompkins. Got tied up. Nice play there by Tashauna Jackson and Tania Woodall. Station will get the ball. The clock continues to run. Hallelujah. Yeah, and he's put the He's called off the press, although it was token for the most part. Another game here Monday night at Scott County High School as Williams tips the ball away and DeFour comes away, dribbles behind her back, spins around. Showtime. Misses. Williams, uh, no. Rebound by Tompkins. Tompkins. Third chance, yes. She has had a night. All three of them have. Seven minutes to play. Brian Station 
Nice ball. Nice, break. nice effort by Godoy. She hasn't quit. Fired up the three at the end of the third quarter. Now hits one here to start the fourth. Long pass from the four to Williams is tipped away by Brian Station. It will stay with SC. See how Brian Station plays it. First time they let Williams catch it, they're going to let her catch it again. Yep. Same result. Too easy. Of course, if they guard her, then that leaves Tompkins open, rolling off the opposite block. So it's really a tough spot to be in. They've tried to defend it two different ways, and it's resulted in three layups. So. Getting down to six minutes to play. Tipped by Malaya will stay with station. Defenders will go into the region as a two seed and play the champion out of the 41st, 43rd, or 44th on the road. There will be free throws coming for Tania Woodall as she's fouled in the act of shooting. First foul for Kaylee. Well, that's, that's hard to believe anybody in this game that's played a significant amount of time has one foul. Right, exactly. Kaylee fits that bill. As many has been called. Makes the first, does Woodall. 35 point margin again. No matter what happens, the clock continues to run, even if Brian Station it does stop for free throws. I've seen some games that Scott County's been in where the other coach, including some against Brian Station, where they've agreed to just let it run during free throws. That makes it really quick. Yeah, and, it, and at some point, it's just, it's better just to get it out. DeFore just coming up short on the layup. She's mad with, with herself. It's happened a few times here in the second half. And a traveling violation there on Woodall. We'll turn it back over to the Lady Cards, and Helton kind of turns toward the bench. I think he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the way DeFore <laughs> landed awkwardly after that layup, and me, personally, Yes. Yeah, so Here we come. All right. right. So get him out of the game. You know, Morgan, she puts that thing up with her left hand. She scores that. That's, uh, you know, that's the one thing that when you're talking to young kids, it's like, you know, learn to use both hands down there around the basket because it's, it's your best friend. Man, she Williams with the pull-up open 12-footer, making it look easy. I don't know if I'm right, but I've got her with 28 right that now. That sounds uh, – the score sheet had her with 20 at the half. I didn't, but what – I'm going to let you keep the score from now on. <laughs> Me trying to do too much. There's an and one, I think. Well, if they gave her the continuation, it would be. It was on the floor. Yeah, they're going to put down. Clock will stop inside. Of, no, it won't stop because there's. Yeah, it will because there are there free throws. Yeah, yeah it was no, on was the floor. Say, it's not a there's not a shooting foul yet. Yeah, I was so. going to say if they're going to give her, so the clock is going to run. It should be an and one. But. And there's the hand for the starters as they sit down for the final time as 42nd District soon to be champions. And that's the fifth foul, I believe. That's yeah. it. On Aaliyah Woodall. Aaliyah Woodall's done. She did not have her typical night. Well, she only averages 5.7 points, but she also gets nine rebounds a game for Bryant Station. Just wasn't able to neutralize Scott County at all on the board. Scott County's had its way, even when shots haven't fallen. And you can understand why with 6'4", 6 6'3", six 6 foot. That 6'3", being Kenny, who's now at the foul line, doesn't play a lot, but certainly works as a super sub for the other two. Yeah, I couldn't quite understand why she felt like she had to stay on the floor to after the first free throw, because she's disqualified with the fifth foul, so she, she doesn't have to stay on the floor. I'm not sure what was going on Yeah, there. I, I don't know if she was trying to do a little protest or if she just thought it was a substitution. Taking her, collecting her thoughts, maybe. A miss by Brian Station, a rebound by Moore. It's taken away by Godoy. Godoy, nice underhanded pass up ahead and an almost finish. But Deshauna Jackson will get fouled and go to the line. Penny with the foul. Bree Penny in the game along with Malia Moore, Tyra Young, Nisi Kenny, and Kenan Owens. Just about ready to start the second half in Frankfurt. As Franklin County nursing that eight point lead over Great Crossing. See how that one turns out. Thank you for joining us for this one. If you can't be here 
in person at Scott County High School before 8 o'clock. We invite you to please join us for the boys game here on the Bird's Nest Network, NFHS or newsgraphic.com. There's a long rebound for Owens who will take it the distance. No, Kenny fighting for the rebound. It'll stay with Scott County. The one off of Marshall. I want to remind you tomorrow night here on the Bird's Nest Broadcasting Network as Kenny gets a short inbound jumper that's rebounded by Young. And we have a Bryan Station player down on the floor and injured, it appears. I believe that's the fifth foul on Tiana Woodall. Yeah, I think it is. And she took the brunt of that. She got the foul. And yeah, we're hitting up. the mouth, yeah. yeah. I want to remind you that uh, while there's a little break in the action, the Battle of the Axes. We've brought you the Battle of the Birds a couple of times this year. Well, the Battle of the Axes is the battle between the Georgetown and Scott County Fire Department's charity basketball game to benef benefit the family of the late Johnny Jacobs, who made such an impact in his all-too-short life in this community, Mark. That's going to be a, an emotional but fun night, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, there'll be a lot of... A lot of tears and a lot of smiles and the good memories with what Johnny was able to do and what he left, and that's just a very good cause trying to raise money to support that family. Obviously, we'll have a lot more information tomorrow night on where you can uh, be part of that in addition to being there in person if you're watching with us but want to help out. There are several ways to do so. Missed free throws. We'll keep it at 80-44, to 44 and the clock is ticking down to three minutes to go here in the 42nd District Girls Championship. Baseline jumper is off, rebound for Kenny, gets it out to Moore. Moore will find, or try to find Penny on the break with just too much mustard there. Didn't have enough room. Maybe on a 94-foot court she right, would Right, I was going to say, even <laughs> if she could catch it, I don't think there was going to be anything she could do. And that's uh, that's just learning the, to, to when to make that pass, when not to with experience. So it's great that they're getting that opportunity to play here. <coughs> In the, in the championship game. Second chance and more free throws for Jackson. 36 to 27 now at Franklin County, about midway through the third quarter, make it 38 to 27. So. Slipping away a little bit from Glenn Wilson's crew there. Wholesale substitutions again as some new lady cards check in. Banks it in. Hope she called it. Banks not usually open at 7.30 <laughs> on a Friday evening. Kelsey Hall. She hit a three-pointer against Sayer. She won't get a chance here as Godoy will take it away. Once again, you have starters going nice. up against the uh, That's a nice pass. Murphy third gets string. second basket. Clock runs. There's a buzzer, but I think it might have been for substitutions or something going on here. A blood. Or the clock's still running. And running and running, even though the officials are having a conference. They have six players on the floor? They might have. I think you're right. Six players on the floor. It's hard to keep the substitution patterns in check in a game like this. That's one way to slow Scott that's County way, that's, that's one way to run another 45 seconds off the clock here. I'm not for sure I disagree with this, with this attempt there, at least. I'm not sure I'm complaining. Sergeant with the free throw that's no good. The clock finally does stop at 121. He figured you gave up 89 the first two. If you can keep it under that here, you, you beat the spread, right? And the one thing we do need to talk about, I mean, the one thing you say, Brown Station's not quit. I mean, no, they struggle. they've got they some hard. They, yeah, they, they don't have the ability to, kids. to score quick, but you got to give hats off to them. With the, they've not quit. And uh, for being that young, that bodes well for the program if they can all stay together the next two years. Uh, but there is a there is a big gap that they've got to try to overcome, as you mentioned earlier, between the program uh, where Scott County's at in the 42nd and where the rest of the girls' programs are at this point. And Brian Hall's style is very even keel with this Brian Station team. He doesn't doesn't yell a lot. He just kind of directs traffic a little bit and kind of knows there's going to be ups and downs, especially in a game like this. There's another turnover. 
for Scott County's youngsters as they had the ball after the technical foul. Ticking down toward a minute. I think we're safe to say that Malaya Williams will be the Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance player of the game tonight. Congratulations to her for, I believe, 28 points is our unofficial total, and I'm sure it's a double-double. Steal by Penny. Penny will get fouled in the back. That's just a push in the back. That ought yeah. to be an intentional foul, but at this point, I don't who know cares? That, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that they're going to call it, but, yeah, that's exactly right, and that's uh, it's really a first sign of frustration Yeah, to, you know, that we've seen. He's got some younger kids in the game now as well. They're just trying to stop them from scoring. It's right. Kind of a last-ditch effort. Wasn't anything uh, insidious about it. Lady defenders will not finish their season, but they'll drop to 12 and 19, and they'll have a chance to play at Regions on the road on Monday night. Scott County will be back here in about 72 hours as they try to begin their bid for a third straight 11th region title. We got another free throw coming. Penny misses, rebound Murphy. Long have, pass, no good. She must have shot one that didn't count. That I was going to say she shot two, and then they, but she made one, and they gave her another one. I don't know if right. the first one was I, a lane violation or something. Yeah, it might it's like have the been. old NBA three to make two thing there. <laughs> yeah, back in the seventies. I'm sitting there thinking if I'm Brian Station, I'm like, I don't need that tonight. I can't beat them the, the other way. Kelsey Hall just dribbling timeout right now. I don't think well, they weren't going to shoot again, but Brian Station will steal it. And the foul for Persley. Get her money's worth. <laughs> victory Sled. No, yeah, it is Victory is her name. Not a big confuse with Sister Sledge. We are family. Yeah. Tell her age right there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Or that that <laughs> song that song wasn't a, was probably popular when her grandparents were in high school, uh, and she misses both, and that will be the final, 81 to 47, four time, four straight district championships for the Scott County Lady Cardinals. We'll get some final stats, and then we'll have a break while I go do some uh, homework between games, talk to some of the particulars, some of the principals. And then we'll be back here just about the top of the hour with Scott County and Frederick Douglass boys. They took the score down so quickly, it's a good thing I got a fairly good memory. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't have a chance to write it down. 81 to 47. I texted it to someone else. That's the only reason I know. I guess they do all the awards for both games after the uh, boys game. Because the girls, correct, the girls took off pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's the case because in that way they both get to cut down the nets. I think one end, the girls champion gets to cut yeah, down. Yeah, that's right. And, and play, play queen and all that stuff. 44 to 34, Franklin County in the final seconds of the third quarter over at FCHS. And they put 39 minutes on the board. So we're going to have a good break between games, which we like. Some final stats. It was 31 points and 10 rebounds they gave Williams. 20 points and 12 rebounds for KT. 11 and 9 assists for Morgan DeFore. So your, your Bermuda Triangle there did its work on Bryan Station. 19 points for Tori Godoy led the way for the defenders. Rebounds were 51 to 27. Malaya was 10 for 12 from the field, 9 for 13 from the line. Tompkins was 8 for 12 from the field. It was a tough night for DeFore shooting, 4 for 16, but the 9 assists and the 4 steals certainly uh, certainly helped. And there you have it. Any final thoughts, Mark, before we uh, 
sign off and uh, take a little bit of a break? Well, no, just congratulations to Coach Helton and the Lady Cards because, again, I mean, anytime you get a district championship, you've had good. You just don't want to get complacent. It's not uh, – there's still bigger prizes ahead, which I'm sure they're going to be looking forward to on, on Monday. I think the draw is Sunday afternoon. Saturday, uh, Saturday. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. So it's tomorrow morning, bright and early, 10 a.m., I believe. We will know shortly after that. If everybody does their job and communicates with me on time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big if. <laughs> I've, I, you know, the great thing is I've got two head coaches to ask now. To say, hey, did you text me a bracket? <laughs> so that helps. But, uh, yes, we will know for the fate of both schools pretty early tomorrow morning. All right, so that's a wrap for game one. We'll be back at 8 o'clock with round two as the boys' championship will tip off. And... Uh, it's going to be an exciting night. Round four of the season for Scott County and Frederick Douglas. We'll be back with you shortly. Thanks for joining us on the Bird's Nest Broadcasting Network. <laughs>